Hey guys, what's up? This is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps, and today I'm going to be going over how I do my very battle-worn desert scheme for Astra Militarum. So here's one of the Toroxes. They're just incredibly dirty, really beat up. You can see I have some three Lehman Rust demolishers done, and a couple of these little Toroxes, and they are just so much fun so much character with all the exhaust this dirty the cannon that's very used and just beat up they've been through a bunch of bunch of wars uh the fluff for my army i call them the sidewinders they're a desert mercenary army so i don't feel bad when they play against the imperium because they are just for hire so today i'm going to show you how i paint this color scheme on the one and only bane blade the king of the tanks it's conquered entire planet systems, entire worlds. The Bane Blade is one and only. I think it's about as close to a perfect model as you can get. I think it's amazing. So this is the classic Bane Blade. Don't mind the missing Laz cannons, they're set aside for now. So, how I start this off, I already did the first step. So you can see these treads are done. Well, pretty close to done. So how I started off, nice and simple. We do, let's see if we can zoom on there, there we go. We do iron breaker. You just coat that whole thing. Make sure to water down your paint. And then two thick layers of Agrax Earthshade. We want this to be as dirty and muddy as possible. Maybe not muddy, but just very dirty, very worn treads. So, sorry about the glare, but yeah, they're they're pretty they're pretty battle worn. So when we get that done, the next step. Let me see if I can see it a little easier on one of these. You can see there's almost like a a burnt orange. You can see in all the lines, all the crevices. I forgot to tell you, we start this off, the spray is actually a Krylon. It's a Krylon primer that you can buy at like Lowe's, Menards, Walmart probably. It's called Krylon Sand Dollar. So it's Krylon Sand Dollar. I hit my whole army with it, I love it. So that's what I start with. So what we're gonna do is, you can see these like rows of rivets. These rivets are just all over it. Every flat surface. I mean, they're everywhere. So what I do is just straight down along each line of rivets. I take my brush and I hit it with Seraphim Sepia. So you take Seraphim Sepia and you just, you do all those rivets. And it's gonna be a little messy, and it's gonna be a little dark, but since they're always in like a square, you leave, make sure to leave this part of each rectangle you do empty. So that it's just the Seraphim Sepia around the rectangle. And at the end, it's gonna be just like covered in little rectangles of Seraphim Sepia all over the armor plating. It's gonna look a little strange, but don't worry. We're gonna do some highlights over the top that'll make that orange rust color fade a little bit but then at the end when all the steps are done you'll still be able to see it sticking through and it almost gives it just like a rusted sand battle worn almost like a burnt marshmallow look is what it reminds me of with all the battle damage on there so don't worry at the end it'll look awesome like this but for now it's going to look a little goofy with all the seraphim sepia in little rectangles all over it and we'll be back after that step all right, so as you can see, this next step is done. Just went with sepia over every, I mean, there's so much. I mean, everything has it. I'm just taking these off because they don't fall. And you don't have to be perfect with it. Just slop it on there. I ended up using almost my entire what I had left in the pot. So it's a big model, it takes a lot of sepia to cover all this, but it gets that real good rust, almost like 
you know, we're in the desert, so it's just old sandy rust just caked on there. Years of dust storms. So, the next step is you're gonna take Longbeard Gray, which is a special dry brush paint, and you're just gonna dry brush and highlight all the raised edges. So, you're getting all the raised edges, and there's quite a bit because of the way this model is so geometrical. Uh, so, you're gonna hit all these edges of the whole thing with Longbeard Gray. And that's the next step. Okay, so after you do the Longbeard Gray dry brush over all the edges, you get, it's really hard to read here, but Eschen Gray. It's about the darkest gray they make. They may make one shade darker. You take Eschen Gray, and then you can find a little piece of foam. Most Warhammer players probably have a miniatures carrying case at some point with some foam. You take that foam and you bend it like this. You dip it in the Eschen Gray, and then you dab it on some paper towel so that it's not so thick. And then you just start hitting up the tank all over the edges. I like to put it on the barrels. And you can really see how beat up this tank is. And you got the little sponge marks. I mean, I put it on all this. I put it on these wheels under it. It's on every raised edge. The cannon barrels, I wanted them to look really, really used. I'll take off these last cannons because they always rattle. And I mean, even up here, you've got his gun nice and used. Up to this side, you've got the auto cannon. Heavy bolters covered in it. So when you end up with all of them. So when you come back, you got very, very battle-worn desert tank to go with his other battle-worn brothers. So yes, this is my army. They're called the Sidewinders. They are mercenary desert warriors, guns for hire. And now there's a Bane Blade. And you see this very, very quick, very, very messy, very, very fun method of painting these vehicles. I mean, really, this was like, you got the treads, you've got this Serapum Sepia step, you have a little dry brush step, and then you have the gray, Eschen gray uh, sponge weathering step. So it's like four steps. It's very quick. I mean, I painted three of these in one night. So now they are all set up and ready for any kind of transfers you wanna put on there. Just make sure you dirty up the transfers a little bit. I find that white accents, like the missiles there and the lions look good on this. So I might find some white transfers to go on there. But yeah, it's pretty much done. Other than that, I could see wanting to do some like typhus corrosion or strickland mud special effect on the treads just to make it look even more uh, battle worn. But uh, this is it. Very, very dirty, very, very messy method of painting that I'm doing for my army. Hope you guys learned a little bit. I could see this being a good thing for like Necromunda if you wanted some like, you know, destroyed vehicles as terrain or something like that. It's just so quick and easy to paint and it ends up looking really good in my opinion. Kind of that burnt marshmallow look I was talking about. <laughs> But well, this is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps. Hope you guys liked this and learned a little bit. You will see this on the battlefield very soon. Please like and subscribe if you like these type of videos. Tell your friends. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.